a Viper, a Roadrunner, and an Impala autopsy, all in one place. The sun is shining again, and after a Montreal winter that seemed like it would never end, the classic American cars that Nick has always loved are back on the road. Returning viewers will remember that Nick recently completed the restoration, rebuild, and dyno testing of this Chevrolet 327. The engine performed flawlessly and was installed into his customer's beautiful 1966 Impala for what looked like a great summer of cruising. But then, after just a couple of hundred miles on the road, the customer brought the car back on a tow truck. And what Nick found was enough to make any Chevy lover sick to their stomach. Today, the man that many call the doctor of cars will begin his post-mortem of this classic engine. Let's take a look at what's happening with the 327 that overheated beyond. I want to take a good look here. We've got this 327 that came out of the 66 Impala. Got pretty well cooked, or should I say, it went extreme overheat. We had checked the uh, light, does not have a gauge. The light did work. We grounded the wire, it did work. And of course, when you have no coolant, the light will not work. Now, did the light come on earlier? Maybe George did not notice it. I'm not so sure. All I can say is that I'm here to figure out what went wrong because I want to make sure if we don't build another engine that we have the same issue. So I've taken apart the water pump. A lot of people made a comment that the impeller could have broke off the shaft. Or is it the wrong rotation? Well, I don't know, it looks like it's all good to me. So I'm not gonna blame the water pump. And it's also a brand new pump that we also had replaced at the time when we built the engine. We had it oversized. It was a 30 over block. We oversized it 40 over. I'm gonna get the pieces, I'll bring them there in a minute. But I wanted to take a quick look here. If you guys see, like the engine looks like it ran out of coolant. The cylinder head turned black and the top part of the cylinders on the block, you can see is burnt, cooked, overheated, or whatever you want to call it. The crank is in it, it still turns. It has been scored. It's turned a little bit black. If you guys take a look here, look at that crank. It's turned dark colors on the journals. It still, uh, it still turns over, but my concern is, do the cylinder bores have any cracks? Well, I'm just gonna turn it over, take a quick look. Maybe we might see something. And do not forget, when the car came back here, we had to add two gallons of coolant and had no leaks whatsoever. So where did it go? Nobody knows. And I know very well that before this car left from my shop, the coolant was full. There was a flow going through the radiator when we had it running at 1500 RPMs. It had no air pockets and it was running well. And then, you know, my client lives about 45 minutes from here, up north. So he's taking the car three trips to his house, had no issues. But on the fourth trip, coming back to Montreal, this is where it all started having the issue. So, I'm just gonna see if I can see anything with the cylinders. I'll get a bright light. I wanna take a good look. If you guys could take a good look right here. You can see some of the cylinders are practically blue. In the meantime, let me get you a connector rod and a piston and I'll show you what happened. And there's the pistons we had installed. They're made by Keith Black. If you take a good look, the wrist pin is jammed. Okay, so you know, of course the uh, pistons got cooked also. They overheated. But I don't see any scores in the cylinders. If you look at the skirts, they look pretty good. So where did that coolant go? I don't know. Maybe was it the cause of a rat leak or anything like that? No, none whatsoever. George also told me, my client, that someone on the highway was telling him that you're blowing steam or smoke in the back on the exhaust. What color was it? Probably was white. Steam, coolant. But 
I don't know. That, this is what I heard. So for that reason, should have had a blown head gasket? Crack cylinder head? Crack cylinders? I do not know. I took a good look at head gaskets. They're not damaged or torn or blown at all. The only thing I did not look at was the cylinders. So I'm going to bring a light. We'll take a quick look, see if we can see any cracks in the cylinders. To determine a cylinder crack, you got to freeze the cylinder. But I'm not equipped here to freeze the cylinder. So I'm just going to take a visual look, see if we can see anything. So I'll get my glasses on, my flashlight, take a look, just look through the cylinders and see if we see anything. Now it's gonna be hard to say, you know, it could be a hairline crack. You know, when it gets hot, then you see that the crack opens up and then it bleeds off into the combustion chamber and then blown out through the exhaust. And from what I see, I don't know, I don't, it's hard to say, I really don't know. I don't see anything on this side. Let me take a look on this side. You know what, I'm just looking at it quickly. It's hard to say. You know, it is 40,000 overboard. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, it's got a crack somewhere else in the cylinder heads. I'm not sure, I haven't sent anything out yet to have it verified. But in the meantime, yes, this is very strange. You know, I've had customers come in Overheating on engines, boiling over, no coolant, and never had an issue like this one here. What really went wrong, I do not know. Then I've got a comment to someone that also made a phone call stating that I should check the thermostat, boil it, and check it to see if it opens. But I don't only boil it in hot water and check it once, twice. He goes, do it at least 10 times. It might open up nine times, and at one time it won't open. So I'm gonna to get to that point, which I haven't done yet, so I gotta look at that. In the meantime, I had that radiator sent out to see if it was uh, blocked or anything like that. It didn't look too bad, you know, and uh, my uh, guy at the radiator shop said, Nick, it's not the best and it's not that bad. So in this case, we're gonna replace the core to be on the safe side. So we're gonna build another engine and put it back in the car. So what's left is that we're just gonna put another engine build up Put into the car and of course we're going to drive it and drive it and drive it to make sure it goes well because i don't want to see this happen again you know summer's here it is a convertible my client wants to drive the car i need the space in my shop so we got to get this out as soon as possible so in the meantime i'll send this block out have it verified to see if there's any cracks anywhere maybe that i don't see and i know that there's no water coolant in the oil whatsoever and i have no idea there was no leaks in the cooling system when we filled it up when the car came off the tow truck. So this is a big dilemma. Where did it go wrong? I do not know. So in the meantime, uh, if anything comes up, I'll keep you guys posted here on Nick's Garage. And uh, I don't know exactly what's going on, but we're gonna do some more search, depending on what my client wants to go through with, and we'll take it from there. I also wanted to say a very big thank you to all our viewers that uh, made comments. I read most of them and I'm still reading on them. I also had emails, I also had phone calls, all on what happened with this Impala 327 engine. So I wanted to thank you guys, all our viewers, a very big help because uh, everybody wants to steer me towards the right direction to see what happened, what went wrong, what could be the possibility. And of course, the driver, maybe not noticing anything wrong, kept on driving and, you know, like maybe like we're saying, red light, you can't see it, maybe with the sunlight on the dash, Convertible top open, maybe had the music on, maybe the road noise with the top open, couldn't hear any detonation noises, I do not know. So it's a hard lesson, but let's hope it's well learned. And let's all keep an eye on those temperature gauges and warning lights as we enjoy our cars this summer. Nobody wants to see this happen to another classic. Nick doesn't need jobs coming back. 
he's already got plenty in the shop that need his attention. This is one of my viewers from Sydney, Australia that bought this car out of California. It's been a while back, it's been shipped here for us to upgrade the 3D3 to a 426 stroke base. He's looking for more torque and horsepower, add a six pack, add air conditioning, and also build more power for it. So, and also install an air grabber hood, which we just got not too long ago. And then this time we gotta, we gotta build this car. We have a big list on this car. I wanna ship it to Australia when it's done. But in the meantime, when we took out the other engine, we just found out there's a hole in the firewall for no reason why it's there. So I need to get it fixed. So I gotta send it out to CGA Autosport to get it repaired. But in the meantime, I have a tow truck coming this afternoon. So I gotta make sure nothing falls out of place because it's gonna be towed on the uh, flatbed and shipped over to the body shop. So let's get to work. Okay, I'm ready. I need you to roll the car, I wanna bring it in the middle. Okay. There we go. All right, so let's tie up everything so nothing falls out of place. There we go. Yeah, it's a little messy in the engine bay, so we're gonna have to do some cleanup here. Beep, beep, road runner. If he catches you, you're through. Beep beep. So now I just got the word that the towing is coming tomorrow to pick up the road runner for the uh, body work. So right now I've got another car outside I'm stuck with. Just got out of the storage, came for an oil change, and now the battery is dead. So let's go take a look. You know, this is not a, this is a nice, nice sports car. It's a Viper. It's not a common car in my shop, but it is something special. All right, let's open the hood. You know, I just leaned on the uh, rocker panel. It is super, super hot. I believe this is a 2006 Viper V10. Well, all the Vipers come with a V10 anyways. Okay, so let's get it boosted. I'm sure it's not gonna start. My brother Flip has a 96 Dodge Ram pickup, 3,500 Dooleys. It's got a V10 in it, and so does this. This is one special car, you guys. How often you see a Viper coming to my shop? Actually, we had a red one a few years ago, and now we got a blue one. Okay, let's see how it goes. Anna, let me know, Anna, okay?
Uh, now I'm gonna leave it in neutral. All right, here we go. You know, just like a Corvette. Here we go. And not only that, you can feel the heat from the rocker, rocker, because the exhaust goes through here. That's awesome. Beautiful color, by the way. I left it in neutral if you need to push it back, Alan. Well, you know what? I haven't done one in a while. Can't be that difficult. Change the oil on a Viper. Plus, I got the chrome to uh, put back on the exhaust, which I'm going to stick on tonight so it can dry overnight. Right here. Okay, we'll take care of it. All right. I'm not going to have to push it back a little. You want me to put it into gear? Oh, you got it, eh? Good. I'll get the oil filter. So we just got a simple job on this one. Just a simple oil change, no motor job. After all, it's a 2006, it's a running car. I believe it's only got a few thousand kilometers on it. And it's here for just a general maintenance. It's nice to see a Viper in my shop once in a while, let me tell you. Check out the dual air filters. V10. I wouldn't mind taking this for a ride down the highway. You know, they have the sports car, Corvette in America. And then they were building it so many years. And uh, Dodge came up with a sports car. Not a muscle car, a sports car. And they came up with this one, the V10. That's pretty unique, you guys. Dodge. And they called it a Viper, of course. Yeah, these are beautiful colors. These are the colors of the Greek flag. Not bad. Anna, it's all up to you, buddy. Anna, I don't know how many quarts this is gonna take, or should I say, liters. We'll find out. Check it out. Built with pride at Corner Avenue, assembly plant, Detroit, Michigan. The Team Viper, which is there right now, the SRT plant. You know, it came out to be against the Corvette. That's, you know, it's a sports car. It's not a muscle car. It's a two-door, two-seater. And I came out to compete with the Corvette. I remember back in the old days, Ford had the T-Bird, which was also a two-seater. Back in the 50s and uh, early 60s, I believe. And now the Viper came out from Dodge. And now, I believe it's only the Corvette. I know why this came out. You know why this came out? Because it's hitting. It's hitting. I'm gonna put it back on with white stuff. Man, this car is completely different, look at that. Undercar wind deflectors, and the full undercarriage is covered. The exhaust going out from the side. 
What a gigantic oil pot. Check that out, you guys. Almost three feet long. This is pretty long, isn't it, uh, Adnan? Looks totally different. What a different car, completely. Aluminum control arms, coil over shocks. Different, different vehicle from the others, let me tell you. A lot of construction on this car. Very special. White tires. I love the bolts they have on the window. Such humongous bolts. That's where it should be. Not like these Japanese cars that come with or German cars with little plastic snap-ons. This is good. Big bolts, take up the cover, work underneath the engine. This is how it's done. All the way across, check this out. Nice. Well, that's it, you guys. This is a special car. It is a Viper. Okay, it's an older model, 2006, but the new ones are a lot better than this, of course. But you know what? It's cool. You know, you got these sports cars, Viper, Corvette. I had a client of mine years ago who wanted to put a 55 body on a late model Corvette chassis. Now it would stick the Corvette body off, put the 55 body on the chassis of the Corvette, which was in the late 2007, 2008 Corvette. Then I said, you know what, you guys, leave the Corvette the way it is. Don't put a 55 Chevy body on it. The same with this. Some people would want to take this car, put a road runner body. Why? Just leave it as it is. It's a Viper. It's a Corvette. That's the way they were born. That's the way they should stay. trim for the exhaust it's the same old piece you know, customers ask me to glue it back on so this should work let it dry overnight sometimes they just need an oil change and a piece of trim stuck back on and sometimes they come in with burnt up engines that need to be replaced either way Nick knows that the details matter and the smallest thing can lead to big problems down the road. Okay, you guys, here we are a few days later, and everybody's been asking the question, what went wrong with the Impala? You know, we've checked the water pump, as we did earlier. We've checked the radiator and, and the sensor. Everything seemed to be working, but the question is, we haven't checked the thermostat so we're going to take a look at it right now i want to show you guys when you boil it at 180 degrees fahrenheit this thing should open up this is the thermostat that came out of the impala it's a 180 full flow 180 degree fahrenheit thermostat which opens 180 degrees so it's a full flow made by mr gasket which i've used and i've used it quite often so i'm going to boil up the water we're going to throw it in there and we're going to see if it opens up and by the way, when we had the car delivered, before we delivered the car, the car took almost four gallons of coolant, maybe a little bit more. We had it revving at two grand. I was pouring in the coolant. I seen the floor going through. So we knew the thermostat was open. We knew the water pump was working. We knew the flow was working through the radiator. Even holding the upper hose, you can see it's hot. That means the water is circulating, the thermostat is open. But, you know, my customer also made a few trips and nothing went wrong until maybe his fifth trip to his house. So now everybody's wondering what really happened. So anyways, the problem is we want to make sure we don't have the same problem when we build them another engine and throw it back in the car. So let's take a look at this thermostat and see what it does. All right, so now that while the water is uh, warming up in my uh, tea kettle, I'm going to throw in the thermostat. You guys take a good look. Take a good look. All right. Watch this. Now that thing should open up. You should be able to see through this. Let's take a look. Let's give it a few minutes. Let's warm it up. Give it a few more minutes. I want it to boil. Even even at 190 degrees, who cares? So when it's a 180 thermostat, it should open at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. But I'm gonna go beyond that. I wanna see if this thing opens up at all. Now I'm gonna let the kettle boil up to 212 so I can make sure it's over 180 degrees Fahrenheit and see what really happens. So I'll just keep watching. 
I'll make sure with my thermometer here. Here we go. Two twelve. Take a look inside. Now that thermostat should be open. Two twelve point seven. If you take a good look, you guys, it did not open. Take a good look. You see no opening here whatsoever. Nothing. So, let's try it again. Here we go. Let it boil some more. In the meantime, I've got another one here, brand new, which I have not even opened the package yet. So, I'm going to try this so we can see what's going on. That thing is boiling in there. That thing should have fried open already. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna open up this one here. There we go. We've got another one here. I'll tie it up. Okay, now we'll do one at a time so we'll mix them up. This is the identical thermostat made by Mr. Gasket, 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And here we go. And by the way, I've been using these thermostats by Mr. Gasket for many, many years. I never had any issues whatsoever. Okay, let's take the one from the Impala out. Here we go. It's been boiling in there for a while. Look at you guys. Nothing. It did not open no matter what. So now let's take a brand new one here, which I've not tested yet. Let's see what it does. Here we go. The water's still boiling. Here we go, ready? There it is. This one's opened up. Look at that. It's open all the way around. You see it? Look at that. Now it's closing slowly as it's cooling down. If you look through here, you can see my fingers. See that? Right here. Look at the opening. Okay, now. You guys, watch this. I'm gonna put them both in the same time. This is the, my left hand, this is my right hand, and this is the right hand, is the one with the Impala. Here we go. We'll put time them both together, and I'll put them both out. The thermostat on my right hand is the one from the Impala. I'm gonna pull them out at the same time, and I'll do a comparison test. This should have been enough right now to open up both thermostats. But, let's see if the one on the Impala on my right hand side if it opens. And here we go. Impala new. That's right. There it is, you guys. There it is. This is the one for the Impala, and this is the one I just bought today, the new one. Wide open. Slam shut. There you go. So there you have it, you guys. Look at this one. Still, it still hasn't closed yet. Look at it. That's a brand new one that I just bought today. And there's the one that came out of the Impala. So there you have it, you guys. Mystery solved. You know, you can build a million dollar engine and a simple thing like a $20 thermostat could give you all the troubles. Yes, you know, a lot of people were blaming the driver, didn't pull over, this and that. But you know what? This thing shouldn't happen in the first place. Anyways, what can you do? Time to build another engine. But just to let you guys know, before you guys buy any thermostat, boil it a few times, maybe eight, nine, 10 times, and you see it opens all the time, then install into your car. And believe me, this new one here, that's gonna be installed again into the Impala, will be tested a few more times before I install it. And the water pump was good, right here was good, the coolant was full, so there you go. You guys, here it is, here's the answer for everybody who was asking, this thermostat did not wanna open up. And thanks for watching us here on Nick's Garage. Thank you guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Nick's Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content, and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.